Okay, great. Meeting is back in session. And we will, um, Councilor Vegan, you were having a conversation about the um, mm. resolution for the public hearing in connection with adoption of local law for the exemption. Thank you. And I'm glad we've all had a chance to take a deep breath and uh, let's proceed um, calmly and in, in good peace, I hope. Um, I, I, uh, I think um, I, I, I would like to hear opinions on this, but I, I would also like to state, which is why I'd be in favor of a public hearing, but I, I'd like to state some of my concerns. First of all, um, I think it's, a, it's um, not necessarily, it's a little misleading to set the price on it that we have right now because the you know of ten thousand dollars i i know you're looking at that again but considering that the goal of this is to increase the the force that number would obviously go up so it's kind of a moving target in some way but th that aside um i love the idea of a resolution like this i love the idea of of not even to help in recruitment but to show gratitude to um, the volunteers who are doing such important work in our community to the point where I would say there are even others. They're not doing things necessarily that risk lives, but um, there are people who make this the place that it is. My, my issue with this is really, it's a question of being able to afford it. Um, the, the fire department has asked us so legitimately and urgently and importantly for um, equipment, for example, that is paid for by things like property tax. And at the same time, now we're looking at, it, it may not be major, but you know, we look at a lot of little increases in, in um, or reductions of where our, our, our sources are for those funds. And I, I have a hard time with that to, to uh, take away from the very fund that is supposed to be paying for some of the things that are so urgently needed within that department. Um, and then finally, just so I get all my thoughts out and you don't have to go around the, the uh, horn with me again, um, the, the other, I have a feeling this is gonna pass regardless of, of what I have just said. I, I just, it just feels like something that's gonna end up happening. So I would like to also consider um, um, the, the uh, equality of it, really, when you think about it, I mean, because it's based on property tax, you have, uh, say, someone who has a mansion on the lake, who's a, a volunteer fire person, and somebody who has a uh, little ranch house in the middle of the city. I mean, the person who lives on the lake from the calculations here would be getting quite a bit better benefit. And the person who rents a house would be getting nothing at all. So, I mean, I feel like if we do adapt something like this, first of all, I'd like to see a counterpoint where those funds would be replaced basically in terms of our income. I don't believe it's gonna prompt so many people to buy another house in Geneva that it will make up for it. But um, I'd love to see a compensation on it. But second, I'd, I'd like to consider something that's a little bit more equitable. Uh, I think somebody's service, uh, risking their lives in the way that fired people do, um, I think all of that is equal, whether you live in a big house that's, that has a high property tax on it or uh, a small house or whether you rent. So um, when we do get to that point, I, I hope that um, something like this would be considered as well. But again, I, I do feel as kind and as well-intended this resolution is, it's a really nice thing that I don't feel Geneva can afford to, to just keep whittling away at our tax base when we already have so much that's off off the rolls already. Um, so I've said my piece. Thank you. OK, I got a bunch of hands up. Just a reminder, this is about a public hearing. So I have Councilor Gallinese, Councilor Kammer, Councilor Peeler, Councilor Salamandra in that order. Um, first off, I think this is wonderful. Secondly, if we didn't have our volunteers, our city budget, which I believe is, I don't know, 2.5 million, I don't know what it is, to be honest with you, it would be double. If we had to pay these individuals, men and women who serve this community, 
that show up when danger's running out, they run in without being paid. Um, I think this is a wonderful, a wonderful thing to give them. And I'm very grateful for our volunteer first responders. Most municipalities only wish they had numbers we had here in the city of Geneva. In my eyes, they're not just volunteers, but they are the backbone and key components that has been and always will be why Geneva has the most respected fire companies throughout our area and throughout the state. These men and women are devoted, serve with honor, integrity, and have the experience which makes our fire department second to none. They bring so much to the table and I appreciate every one of them. When that danger arises and most are running from, away from the dangers, these men and women who I must remind you are not paid, show up at all hours and numbers, run into the dangerous situations at their own free will to help us, save us, and save our properties, and most of all, give us hope. In the sense that when the dangerous situation settles, it will be all right. To me, this is so honorable and should never be taken for granted, but embraced. Like I said, they show up unpaid and at their own free will because they cared that much about you, me, and all strangers in need of help. This speaks volumes to their character and to our fire department's leaders in the city that they signed up to do this work for free for. It is given them a if given them a tax break is debatable by any one of us at this on this council. You really should check yourself and learn the history of our fire department in this city and the company's role they have played in this city's history. Let me say this: if we had to pay for the service they provide, we are talking millions on top of the budget that we already have. We should be grateful, and I can't stress enough, let me also remind me remind you the money that they raise on their own efforts to buy their own supplies and equipment that would cost the city hundreds of thousands of dollars. These men and women need this break, they deserve this break, and it shouldn't be within question. Yes, there's some tweaking of it, and there's some concerns that this council has, that's understandable. But I am extremely proud to have them and, and beyond grateful for all they do. To me, this is a no brainer, but I am sure some on this council will feel different and they should be ashamed of themselves if they do. Let me also point out that this is this break will also help attract and retain volunteers, which is also a bonus to the city. Councilor Cameron. I saw you, Councilor Solomon. You're after Councilor Peeler. Well, then acknowledge it because you told um, me to let you know. Well, I. Thank you, Councillor Reagan. I, I feel uh, um, about this issue uh, quite a bit like you, so I'm not going to go back through all those good points that you made. Um, I do want to look at a, a couple of things that are in this resolution. The, the second, whereas, says the number of volunteers has fallen to a point where service has been affected. Uh, what I'd, I'd like to see done is a sort of a support for the conversation we're going to have next month um, or thereafter is I would like to see uh, and understand that situation. And for that matter, I'd like to, you know, we have, we have, uh, um, my understanding is we have 16, I'm gonna correct me if I'm wrong, drivers, 18 drivers. And we have two chiefs, assistant and a chief. Um, and then we have the whatever number of volunteers we have. So I'd like to look at, the fire department whole, holistically and also then more specifically the volunteer problem that's developed. Um, and, um, you know, one of the things that the fire department has done, which we all applauded last meeting, was that you're taking on this first response, uh, you know, responsibility. And uh, so I, I think we've got to mix that all together and understand that so that we can address that but i don't think this re i don't think this this uh this residency thing is at all done in a way that it's equitable measured and careful and uh um it's and and the last thing i have to say is um the dpw is doing dangerous work every day all over the city. I, if you've, I, I am a person who likes, I'm a maintenance man from way back when I worked at the Hobart Williams Smith colleges and I was attracted to trenches, pipes, um, and, and big holes and everything else. And I've 
visited the city uh, DPW in certain situations in emergencies or in where they're replacing uh, high pressure lines and everything else in holes that are 10 or 12 feet deep and full of water. And that is dangerous work as well. And so I just feel that this city is broke. We've got to grow out of our problem. And I, 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 I will be speaking to that at the next uh, meeting. Council Peeler. Yeah, I just I, I support this and it, it's it makes logical sense. Uh, there was I, I hope everyone can review the FLSA packet that I sent in the email today, which lists the federal uh, approved or common benefits that communities give their volunteers. And they include liability insurance, health insurance, life insurance, disability insurance, workers' compensation, pension plans, length of service awards, and personal property tax relief. And these are all these are all more and more common things. And it, and this is also just a public hearing, so there's no mechanics to really judge yet because we're just going to get the public's feedback. And I think that's really important. I want the public's feedback, so please, residents, email us or come to the meetings and tell us what you think. Um, I think what's really important of, of what who who thinks is chief. Uh, what's the bead on the volunteers? I mean, I'm assuming they like it. Is it is it something that you think is is well received, or you know, what's what feedbacks what feedback have you got from our active volunteers? Um, like the city manager alluded to, uh, this is pretty in the infancy stages here. We're 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 just getting a lot of information about this. This was pushed out through uh, a law in Albany. And we are still getting a lot of data back on this. So there's a, probably a lot of questions that you have. We are in the same boat. Um, we, we reached out uh, the county treasurer and I have been working together along with our assessor and the city manager. Um, he reached out to the assemblyman Gallahan, who is a co-sponsor of this bill. We're waiting on that information back as well. So great questions that are coming up. Uh, we, the volunteers of Geneva are not asking for this, this is something that was pushed down through Albany as an option to retain and recruit new volunteers as a global problem, or at least a state problem right now. It is a problem. We do see a decline. And I, Councilor Cameron, I would love to have you down at the station and we can go over all the numbers you'd like. Um, so, sure, anybody who would like to come down, we, we'll, we'll give you all the data you need. Um, there is a decline and we can, we, we keep pretty good data on that. So this is just another way to possibly recruit and retain, and maybe it works for us, maybe it doesn't. Um, the numbers don't seem extravagant at this point. The, the maximum that the, the assessor has come up with for city properties is about 38 people. And that doesn't even mean that they meet the eligibility requirements for this law. Um, there's a, a stipulation that, that we set the requirements, uh, what we would consider an active or an eligible volunteer. So there's a lot to go over with this, uh, a lot of moving parts in this. And uh, the county's looking at it. The county may not adopt it at their level. They might push it over to the municipalities. So I think bear with us on this. We'll try to get you more information. Um, Jan, I like what you said about the equity. It does not seem fair to, we have a lot of volunteers who rent properties. And uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, the number of $10,000 that the assessor came up with, I think is a, a kind of a high number, honestly. And if we can do something where we get a good number of volunteers that we know are gonna be supported by this program, that would be the best thing for us to look at moving forward, get a good actual, actual number of the minimum and maximum volunteers we'll have in this program. Um, again, it's just another avenue of recruitment and retention. It, it may be good, but right now I, I can't give you an answer of will it be good or bad. I, I don't have an opinion on it yet. So, And, and that's a cumulative impact, that 10,000. That's not, that's not. No, the average, know. it looks like the average uh, break for the, the homeowner will be between the 150 and 250 range. Right. Dollars, uh, not hundreds of dollars yeah, yeah. per year. Yeah. I want to make sure Correct. that was understood. It's not 10,000 per person. That would mean like a $2 million house or something. Correct. We're talking about 150 to $250 on average. Uh, and it's the city assessor has better data on that. Yeah, but yeah. All right. thank uh, you very much. Councilor Salamandra. Um, just a point for uh, Clerk Guinan. I'd like the record to reflect earlier that the mayor, how many times the mayor interrupted me during my comments. Okay. And then I'll move on to this. Okay, and I wish we could give tons of money to all of the people who volunteer to make the city of Geneva great. Um, I think that uh, I don't, I personally don't value things like that. I think people who are feeding people and growing gardens, everybody who is committing to the city to, and I, I um, 
I just think that unless we can do it for everyone, we can't do it for some volunteers. Um, we hear over and over again about 44,000 for the fire department for this because they're volunteers, because they're volunteers. And I just think if you're a volunteer, then you don't get paid and um, you don't get a break like this. And so um, I think that the city of Geneva should be safe and healthy in a number of ways that includes from fires. And it also means that they should be financially healthy enough to feed their kids, which means that we can't give more than the 45 cents to public safety than we already give. There's no money for anything else. So if the fire department needs more money, then I think we need to look to the police to budget and see where to get it from their partners. Councilor Noon. I just want to say, I think this is a great piece of legislation that the uh, uh, New York State has handed us and allowed us to grant to our residents. Uh, definitely look forward to hearing from the residents. I really do hope people actually show up and, and comment on this. Uh, particularly, I'd really like to hear from those that would be directly impacted by this. So the volunteers uh, from the fire department or EMS, uh, it'd be great to hear from them specifically and, and what their feelings are on this. Um, I think it's a great opportunity. There's no question uh, that their dedication to the city and, and what they bring to uh, their jobs and, and the danger that they put themselves in every day for us. I mean, 10% is, is absolutely nothing um, that you can't put a price on, on safety for sure. Um, but I really would like to hear from the residents. I think it's great that we open that opportunity up. And, and I, I do agree with Jan that if we are to follow through with this, that we do look in, into the equity part because it definitely, if we're going to do this, let's do it right and make sure that the renter is, is treated the same as the, the homeowner and, and make sure that the program has some equity in that regard. But uh, look forward to hearing from the public. And I think this is great and fully support it and, and uh, want to bring this opportunity forward to those affected by it. So if I may, just just a piece, because it is the state legislation, it does make that an equity piece a challenge because of what we can and can't do. And so because of the legislation, there may be other ways to recognize volunteers, um, but we can't do a similar exemption because it is only property tax exemption that is part of this legislation. Okay. So does Council that mean Burrell? that section two is in stone? Yeah. Yes, that's all from the legislation. Okay. Clerk, please call the roll on the public hearing. I'm sorry, Mayor. I didn't get the uh, who made the motion and who seconded it. I believe it was Councilor Galanese made the motion and Councilor Peeler seconded it. Thank you. Correct. Councilor Galanese? Aye. Councilor Burrell? Aye. Councilor Peeler? Aye. Councilor Regan? Aye. Councilor Camera? Aye. Councillor Salamendra? Nay. Councillor Brim? Aye. Councillor Noon? Mayor Valentino? Aye. Motion carried. Next is the first reading of an ordinance, number 1-2023, amending chapter 335-17, vehicles and traffic by Pulteney and Washington, presented by our city manager. Okay. So this is an ordinance um, as a result of some of the comments raised at the last meeting on 118 Washington Street, um, the corner of Washington and Pulteney. Uh, it's where president, uh, residents are parking vehicles um, and it would provide a 50 foot setback from Washington Street to allow safety for multiple vehicles. I need a motion. Councilor Noon, seconded by Councilor Brim. Discussion? Councilor Peeler. Just a quick question for like technical real estate lost. It's essentially like one parking spot, right? 50 feet, 50 feet, like two parking spots, three. Two, I would say two, two probably two yeah. or three, but I am not the director of public works. So we can look into what the actual is, but it's, it's a couple. All right. Thank you. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Noon. Councilor Galanese? Aye. Councilor Burrell? Aye. Councilor Peeler? Aye. Councilor Regan? Aye. Councilor Camera? Aye. Councilor Salamendra? Aye. Councilor Brim. Aye. Mayor Valentino. Aye. Motion carried. Next is the first reading of an ordinance 2-2023 amending chapter 335-17 vehicles and traffic for South Main and J Street presented by our city manager. Okay. 
So uh, when you have the director of public works look at ordinances, he goes through a lot of ordinances. And this is another one where there is a new business um, and there is a request for on-street parking within this area. This would reduce the current 260 foot to 190 foot setback on J Street, which would allow multiple vehicle parking spaces at this location. It also allows for sight distance to the north so that there is still safety precautions in place. Motion, Councilor Galanese, second by Councilor Noon. Discussion. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Galanese? Aye. Councilor Burrell? Aye. Councilor Peeler? Aye. Councilor Regan? Aye. Councilor Camera? Aye. Councilor Salamandra? Aye. Councilor Brim? Aye. Councilor Noon? Mayor Valentino? Aye. Motion carried. Next is the first reading of an ordinance 3-2023 amending chapter 335-9 stop intersections William and West Street but presented by our city manager. Yes, so this was another one that came forward I believe at the last meeting about the high traffic volume at this intersection um, and the addition of two stop signs uh, to allow for safety and crossing. It would be installed on William Street at West Street to control that traffic in that area. Motion, Councilor Galanese, seconded by Councilor Regan. Discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Galanese? Aye. Councilor Burrell? Aye. Councilor Peeler? Thank you for doing this. Aye. Councilor Regan? Aye. Councilor Camera? Aye. Councilor Salamendra? Aye. Councilor Brim? Aye. Councilor Noon? Mayor Valentino? Aye. Motion carried. The next item on the, the agenda is a discussion that we're going to move to our next meeting on February 15th. And I'm going to move on to appointments to boards and commissions. Do we have any? Yes. Um, the planning board wishes to reappoint Don Cass for his third term, I believe. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Councilor Peeler, discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Galnese? Aye. Councilor Burrell? Aye. Councilor Peeler? Aye. Councillor Regan? Aye. Councillor Camera? Aye. Councillor Salamandra? Aye. Councillor Brim? Aye. Councillor Noon? Mayor Valentino? Aye. Motion carried. Uh, the Police Budget Advisory Board would like to reappoint Michelle Neary and John Lynch. I have a motion, second by Councillor Noon. Discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Galanese? Aye. Councillor Burrell? Aye. Councillor Peeler? Aye. Councillor Regan? Aye. Councillor Camera? Aye. Councillor Salamandra? Nay. Councillor Brim? Aye. Councillor Noon? Mayor Valentino? Aye. Motion carried. Any more? Okay, next is Mayor and Council Reports. I'm going to start with Councillor Regan. Oh. <laughs> okay. You look ready. All right, I guess I'm ready. Um, thank you. Uh, I am the liaison to the Green Committee. Um, we're excited about the uh, the, uh, the the you know the, the position that's now uh, being shared jointly or will be soon uh, between the town and uh, the city with a sustainability type of person. We're very familiar with Jacob Fox and glad to see that he was hired. And um, so we're looking forward to that. Um, also, the committee is pushing forward with its Mission Zero event, which is being planned for Earth Day. That's April 22nd. Um, this year, it's being planned for the uh, Ice Rink Rec Center. Um, so that's underway, and uh, you'll be hearing more as that date approaches. Uh, but as for my time here, <laughs> outside of meetings, et cetera, most of my time has gone towards the 125th celebration. Um, and I guess I'm looking to uh, my fellow counselors here to, I will send you an email on this, but um, the main event at the Smith Opera House will be uh, March 4th. And we certainly hope to see all of you there. Um, so you can mark your calendar on that one. Um, but just to give you a few updates on what is being planned, it, it's pretty miraculous. And there are only a few details left to nail down before all of this is public, but we don't want to do too much piecemeal. But um, so uh, there are six um, speakers for a speaker series. Two of them are on the Iroquois Nation, which was here before 
Geneva was Geneva. Uh, those are mostly for children and families, um, storytelling and one that's in the schools itself. Geneva uh, Historical Museum, History Museum, already has an exhibition up um, showing how we've celebrated these milestones in the past. Um, also in the in the speaker realm, we have a couple happy hours um, being presented just that gives a, a then and now kind of approach to 1898 and where we are today. Um, we've got uh, the impact of the wine industry with Evan Dawson coming to present that, which is very exciting. That's a kind of to be announced where. Um, a little bit on, on the diverse cultures of Geneva, um, including basically every ethnicity that we know as our neighbors. Um, and that will be on, on March 1st. We've got, uh, let's see, a, a couple more sort of entertainment. These are quite educational and, and exciting to be able to present, but um, there's also quite a bit of fun happening. Um, we are going to bring back, um, uh, bring back the first Fridays. People might remember those from a few years ago. There'll be at least it's a trial one, but we decided to make it in, in time with the celebration. So Friday, March 3rd, there'll be, um, a, a, you know, the first Friday event and uh, Geneva Community Projects is, is providing 10 musicians so that there'll be musicians in 10 different locations. Um, let's see. And then Saturday, the big day, there is a there is a um, uh, one of the speakers in the morning with children. But at four o'clock is an all community celebration at the Smith. There'll be a, essentially a professional video presented, which we're all looking forward to seeing. Um, and it is the theme is then and now. Um, many other things are planned. We're talking about possibly a trivia game, to, you know, uh, but things that will involve the audience. We would really like to see a lot of people come out. So as those details develop, I hope you'll spread around to all your neighbors and get people there. Following that, at the Welcome Center, there'll be a reception with some food and, and beverages from local um, providers from downtown. And of course, after that, on the Long Pier, there's fireworks. So it's not July 4th, but we will have um, fireworks over Sen Seneca Lake um, coming from Long Pier. And following that, it looks like we're going to be able to have kind of post parties with historic cocktails. We wanted to serve a historic cocktail at the at the little reception following the Smith, but um, the liquor license is for beer and wine. So we, you know, probably the local places, uh, some of the bars, and, and we're hoping at 41 um, Lakefront, you'll see a little, you know, there'll be some music there and uh, some mixing of historic cocktails for people who want to make more of a night of it. So um, that's just a quick overview. You'll be seeing all of this very soon. We have a Facebook page that's about to be populated and uh, it should be all rolling out in the press real soon. It's a very exciting committee and I'm excited to be a part of it. And uh, you know, we'll celebrate Geneva. I think we all can use a nice time when we come together and uh, recognize what a beautiful, uh, community we have and a great place to live. So that's what it's all about. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. You have my curiosity about what a retro cocktail is from 125 oh, years ago. That should yeah. be interesting. That's right when bartenders first My guess started. is it's cloudy. <laughs> <laughs> Very soon. We we just have a couple of details. We're still hopefully by the end of the week you'll see it. Okay, Councilor Salamandra. Um, the Ontario County Housing Study is still going. They've had over six hundred responses. So thank you to people who have um, submitted them. Um, next month, I will have more information on what they found and what they intend to do. Councilor Peeler. Very good, thank you. The Recreation Board met this month. And just for some updates that came out of that meeting, for the Martin Luther King Day skating event, they had almost 212 skaters, so that was great. Um, a reminder that youth skating lessons started, I believe, the day before yesterday. So they've, they've had a 25 or so pre-registrations. And if you're interested in registering, you can still still can call 
five zero zero five, and you can and you can jump on that. Um, some of the discussions that uh, occurred during the board meeting were the prevalence of pickleball. Apparently, pickleball is like a social hysteria. <laughs> now, I didn't know this. My mom helped me out with this. I guess pickleball is sweeping the nation. So that was a discussion, and there might and there might be some pickleball uh, improvements that are going to be selected and, and identified for the city. That was one of the discussion topics. Um, and of course, a lot of these topics revolve around budget. Like, how are we going to pay for these things? Uh, people often, after the you know public safety is taken care of, and then the the, the roads and the potholes are filled like what's what do we do then and then that's usually recreate so ho hopefully they will kind of will get some feedback and also public feedback about if people really want these pickleball improvements i think i think people will so that was a discussion the next uh meeting will be february 15th and or no yeah the next meeting will be in a couple weeks yeah february 15th and i think it'll be six o'clock and that is it for my board report. But I do have a question because I didn't want to keep asking you questions during your report. So I wrote down my questions for right now. And the question, one of the questions was, our event application URL, can we kind of get that so that we can tell people how to kind of schedule their events? Because anyone can schedule an event. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of spaces that people can schedule events. It's actually quite affordable. And from my experiences, the city does a pretty good job of doing their best to accommodate people's events in our public spaces. And, and thank you for making that a form, mm -hmm. right? That was the whole point of like one of our, one of our web upgrades was making things formable and that type of thing. So maybe that can, do you have, do you have that right now? I don't have that right now, but mm -hmm. we can get that for all of you. <laughs> thank you. All right, so that, that'll be great that we can get that out for, for us and the people to know. Um, the Veterans Day kiosk. Did that? Did we get enough lead time about that? I really wish I could have gone to that. I know it was advertised a few months ago or whatever it was when the when Hochul announced that she was putting these in all the visitor centers. But I don't I don't recall being given the opportunity to go unveil that with you with you guys. There was not a lot of lead time. Um I, I think there was maybe a few days of lead time. So Very good. not a lot on that. Um there were many people there. I will give credit. Liz Toner helped a lot mm. organize that to the point that I believe the staff that were there think she works at the Welcome Center because she really took that on and was there with them all day. So we did not get a lot of lead time. Unfortunately. Well, I'm the grandson of veterans and I really just I wish I could have done something because I, I always try to roll out for them because they are just at the tip of the spear, literally, for uh, our freedom. Um, all, one last thing, uh, public skating this month will be extended. That's for people who want to ice skate. It's still nice and cold. I think today was one of the coldest days mm -hmm. of the winter. And, uh, so that's February 20th through the 24th. And that will be 1130 to 330. And so that's, that's an extended period of skating for people. So again, uh, that's it for my, uh, that's it for my report. Thank you very much. Yes, you. Again. Sure. Um, yeah, Councillor Peeler, um, uh, when you say improve the pickleball, do we have pickleball offered now? So, I, from, okay, that's a good question. And now I played tennis. So I believe pickleball is being picked up in basketball courts and tennis courts across the city. Am I right? Well, uh, one thing I know is that the Geneva Community Center has it almost weekly, I believe. Okay. Uh, it's sponsored. I, I know um, the Rickies, who are such good um, benefactors of mm -hmm. the city, are big fans of it. And so they put it forward. I believe there's an adult pickleball um, program there that takes place weekly. But in any event, just so no, that they know there is something there, which That's... is, um, yeah, one more thing the Boys and Girls Club and the Geneva Community Center does for, for all of us. Just, yeah. Nice plug. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> Councilor Burrow. I'll be pretty short here this month, but um, Jay and your neighbor, George Fairfax, um, single-handedly brought pickleball to the city of Geneva better than 10 years ago. Um, and up until COVID, he has an annual pickleball tournament that draws people actually from all over the state. And um, it's, it's, it's alive and well. But it is a really cool sport. Um, it's not just for people that have an AARP card. Um, it I I learned I learned how to play it at a conference a couple of years ago, and and it is 
it's an addictive activity and it's really a lot of fun. Um, the scoring and the terminology, of course, you have to kind of learn how to do that, but um, uh, there's great opportunity for pickleball in the um, in, in Geneva with existing facilities that really just need to be restriped, if you will, mm -hmm. to play the game. So, um, but it's a blast. If you, anyone here has an opportunity to, to uh, try it, you should try it. Um, anyway, you have five opportunities also to give uh, blood this month. And, um, and I have to give you those dates. Of course, uh, Thursday, February 9th at the Oaks Corners Fire Hall from 11 to 5. Friday, February 17th at Jordan Hall at the Experiment Station, um, Cornell Agritech from 9 to 2. Uh, Friday, February 24th at the Hall Fire Department from 1 to 6. Uh, Monday, February 27th at the Presbyterian Church from 1 to 7. And two opportunities on Tuesday, February 28th at the Scanling Center um, at the colleges from 1 to 7. And also at Geneva General Hospital the same day. Um, from 11 to 4. Uh, February 28th, a Tuesday, at the Scanling Center from 1 to 7. Um, the, the Geneva um, BID, which usually takes up the majority of my counselor's report, um, we had primarily a financial budget meeting um, this month and some developments of new committees um, so I don't uh, need to bore you with the numbers on that, but it's really not part of the report um, other than we're working on finalizing our budget. Um, the HDC did not meet, and I'm thrilled um, uh, really to make my next presentation to the city manager um, on behalf of the Shade Tree Committee. Um, Jim Norwalk, his 12-year-old uh, son, Augie, and my neighbor, Jim Oswald, and I, um, we raised $1,560 um, in January in firewood sales, and I can't even keep up with the demand. So um, the city of Geneva gets 100% of the proceeds, and this was a record month this last month. So I'm really thrilled to be able to give you that money. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I wasn't able to go to the Shade Tree Committee this uh, past meeting. Um, I did skim over some of the minutes, and um, we're doing some fantastic things with um, maintaining uh, the trees in this community. And remember, maintaining is also removing trees that have been long overdue. So um, one of the reasons that I got on the bandwagon to raise money for the city is that for every tree that we remove, we actually should be planting at least two trees. So um, Geneva is a tree desert as far as trees getting to maturity because we've taken down so many mature trees that need to come down. And that's why I am so excited about our nursery on Doran Avenue, where now we actually have trees that are subject to transplant. So we're buying them at a very low, low cost so we can grow them to the point of transplanting them as opposed to purchasing them at the size that we're transplanting where the cost is off, oftentimes five or six times. So um, that's part of my impetus of uh, doing this these firewood sales. Um, and that's actually the end of my report. Thank you, Carlson. Thank you. Quick question. Yep. Where do you guys get the wood? Uh, we get it from uh, properties around my house, including my own. Um, and so I have a close relationship with um, with tree surgeons and uh, I have access to wood. Um, they advise me of trees that are being taken down and uh, we go and pick that wood up. Oftentimes we split it on site. We cut it to length. I also take down uh, trees for other people just for the wood. Um, so I can take it back and split it, and then I hawk it through the Finger Lakes Times. And um, and uh, also I have some people that are sophisticated enough that know how to use Facebook. And um, anyway, <laughs> I, 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 have a, I have a backlog. I've wanted to ask you that question for a long time. Thank you. For Councilor Noom. Uh, the zoning board did not meet, but I have a couple things. Uh, 
since the reconfiguration of five and 20, it came to my attention uh, through others recently, as well as my own observations, that if you're headed westbound uh, toward Lake Street, there is real no alert allowing uh, motorists to know that that is a turn only lane until they get almost to the intersection and then have to change. So I, I recently reached out to Joe Venuti about that. Um, and I just want to pass along what he said, uh, that the design was reviewed and, and commented on numerous times before it was finally uh, got approved by the Department of Transportation, uh, planners and engineers, and based on several factors, uh, but not limited to posted speed limits, lane widths, etc. The project did not call for the lane merge or lane shift signage uh, at the location in question. However, uh, he's also had similar questions raised uh, and have asked the consultant engineers for additional input on adding that type of signage. Um, as you head westbound approaching Lake Street. So the topic's already under review. Uh, I was really glad to hear that. And uh, he'll be seeking additional recommendations this Friday at their project meeting. Uh, so I just asked him to keep me posted on that. So if he gives me any updated information, I'll provide that. But I think that's, I, I stressed to him that I felt that that was a very important issue that needed to be addressed uh, before, you know, some type of motorist accident happened there. Uh, second off, recently there was an article in the newspaper uh, by uh, Mr. and Mrs. O'Brien, who live in Waterloo, uh, who has reached out to the Waterloo Village Board uh, to create hometown hero banners, uh, which will depict uh, those killed in action in the armed forces. If you if you read the article, that you would you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, but if you've traveled through Penny Ann, uh, Watkins Glen, Lyons, uh, numerous municipalities around our area have very similar ventures. Uh, so I reached out to, to Ms. O'Brien to get additional information uh, as I would like to bring that project to the city. Um, I, I think that would be a great addition to our downtown uh, light poles. Uh, you know, in Penyan, it depicts, you know, those who served. So they aren't necessarily deceased. Uh, they may still be living. Uh, Waterloo's is going to focus purely on those um, who have been deceased. Uh, I know she went in front of the village board and created a mission statement and a strategic plan, a budget and, and what have you. Um, and so uh, if as long as people don't object to that, I would like to follow that forward uh, with Miss O'Brien and, and learn further information, discuss it a little further with with Amy and, and uh, the, you know, the, the necessary powers that be uh, to bring that project here to the city and, and to get that going. And I, I just think it would be a great uh, way to honor uh, whether we take the path of, of those who are still living or honor those who are deceased. Uh, I think it would be a great way to, to honor our veterans and, uh, you know, to give you a quick little tip bits obviously uh you know I, I know Watkins Glen their start from the Civil War up to currently which I think is pretty incredible and and they also include uh one service dog uh is featured on their banner um who died in action and and the banners are usually hung around obviously it varies uh you know, between municipalities, I know it's Hamburg hangs theirs in April, uh, that uh, I know in, in Miss O'Brien is shooting for around Memorial Day to Veterans Day. Um, and I, to me, I think that's a very logical time frame, given the the two uh, ends of those holidays, that'd be a great opportunity to hang those. So stay tuned for more information to come. Uh, but that's a project that I've begun working on. Uh, and we'll definitely be working more closely to with her as uh, to gather the necessary information and, and move this forward. Councilor Galanese. <coughs> Sorry, I didn't have my mic on. I'm going to start over. Yep. The Police Budget Advisory Board continues to meet on a monthly basis and had their January meeting on Thursday, January 19th. At this meeting, the group discussed the tentative timeline for the 2024 budget preparation and the Police Budget Advisory Board's involvement in the budget process. At the March meeting, the Comptroller will be hosting a brief budget workshop. Additionally, the group continued to discuss and narrow down particular topics of interest to address and research further. Based upon group interest, they are going to continue to research police response to mental health crisis, as well as response to the elderly and wellness checks and develop recommendations to be further discussed at the February meeting and beyond for budget recommendations. I want to uh, thank uh, Mara Dunn for sending this to me. This this is the, the board's words, not mine. Um, I have been unable to attend a lot of these meetings due to me uh, participating in coaching at the Boys and Girls Club for 
their youth basketball season. So hopefully uh, in the next uh, month, I should be able to attend these meetings. Um, and I want to thank them again. The planning board did not meet in January, but is meeting in February. And I think it's going to be a pretty exciting meeting as they're going to discuss a uh, subdivision of three city owned properties to be subdivided into one. And this is the OEO property. Um, they've had many developers uh, have interest in this site. So they're going to be proactive and do this to make it a little bit more appealing to them um, to see what they come up with as a plan to be proposed to the planning board and to us as council. I, mean, I know that I'm speaking a little. I, I don't think I understood that was you said subdivide or divide or bring them together. They're going to bring them together. They're three three together. city owned property. Three yes. city owned. They're going to right. combine. Okay. Thank you. So, so that's, uh, you know, wishful thinking and hopeful thinking. Um, that's something to be excited for. Um, and that's all I, I have. And, and that meeting for the planning board is going to be on the third Tuesday, which is not normally their normal day because that two or that Monday is a holiday. So it will be Tuesday, the 21st of February. Council Brim. Uh, so I wasn't able to attend the housing authority meeting this month, but uh, one thing that I do want to mention is for everybody with it being tax season, remember this year with the 15th of April being on a weekend, taxes are due the 18th. Thank you. Councilor Cameron. I, I don't know. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. I thank. Uh, I don't have much. I I do appreciate the city managers, uh, um, identifying those three properties in in her report. And she says that these are the three derelict properties that I've been complaining about for a long time. And so uh, they let's put it this way: they're in the they're in the shoot. They're in process. They're uh, on the radar screen, and there's engagement with the owners. Okay, so I will. I'll just keep calm about that for a little while longer um but thank you for that um one of the other things that i wanted to say was that uh of course you've all been hearing me talk about the finger lakes region you know, finger lakes railroad and the uh genesee transportation council um project which we're which is unfolding very slowly uh all i have to say is is that the schedule is starting to come into focus the consultant that will assist us has not been selected, and that will happen sometime in March. It's a long time from now. Um, and by April, um, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll start to have regular meetings and uh, discuss, uh, you know, how to the research that the consultant is going to conduct for us. So that's that. Then the last thing, um, I am not sure exactly. I, I wasn't in a passing conversation or anything else, but every meeting we have a report on the progress of the Marina uh, project. And um, I hope that we're going to uh, have a gut check on this at some point. I, I know that getting some of the permits and getting, getting uh, uh, things in place in order to do future phases of the project is a long, takes a long time. Um, but um, one of the things I also understand is is that the city manager, correct me if I'm wrong, is going to conduct a rigorous benefit cost analysis of this project and will analyze and provide to that analysis the future costs of taking care of this marina. Um, I think that uh, everything should be um, relevant. Uh, things like, uh, as well as the environmental impacts it's going to have on the north end of the, the lake, and um, as well as, um, it, you know, if it's a break-even deal, then how do other people who don't have boats enjoy, you know, do we enjoy lower tax rates or anything else if it's not a moneymaker? Um, there's plenty of, uh, I don't believe that the boating community is suffering up in the north end of Seneca Lake, you know. So these are these are, and it's not going to be big enough to make a difference. So 
putting the amenity here has to do something for more than just boat owners uh, who many of them who may not even, you know, spend enough money in this, in this city. So that I just hope that you'll do a very thorough um, benefit cost analysis. I'd be happy to uh, assist. And, and that's something that I um, learned to do when I went to graduate school and I still remember the, the art. So I want to just offer that I'm a, um, I'm a, now a part-time um, <laughs> consultant. So I do have a, a couple more hours on my uh, schedule uh, for uh, city projects and environmental work. Thank you. Um, Al, this he didn't meet this month. Uh, just big shout out. The MLK event was well attended. Um, I, I was amazed in, in the weather. Normally with rain, cold, snow, the sun shined and it was a beautiful event. Um, I, my compliments to the Master of Ceremonies, Reverend Golden, Lucille Mallard, for all the effort she puts in every year to make the event such a success. And, and all the speakers, including our city manager, um, we just appreciated that event and appreciated it. And the, the city councilors who were able to attend and one who actually took some pictures too, which is her, her expertise. So thank you very much. The last thing on our agenda besides adjournment is public comment. So I'm looking out at Pat, wondering if Pat, I know you declined to begin with. Pat, would you like an opportunity? talks about a coin as close as you can he's a very successful businessman and he talks about a coin and there are two sides of a coin but it's the rim that brings the coin together this is a council made up of democrats republicans independents two sides of a coin it's important to bring us together thank you for your comment pat I need a motion to adjourn. Councilor Noon, seconded by Councilor Peeler. All in favor? Any opposed?